going to be talking about JavaScript decorators, and I got the title of Decorate the World uh, mainly when I was talking to one of my coworkers because I came back. I'll tell a short story about my vacation that I came back from, and I was like, we got to start using these decorators. And he would tell me some new thing, and I'd be like, we could probably make a decorator for that. So I got really excited about decorators, and I wanted to decorate everything. But hopefully, uh, by the end of this talk, uh, you'll have uh, an idea of how you can use decorators in your uh, current projects that you're working on and things like that. So we're going to go over uh, what decorators are, how we can use them today. Uh, you'll hear a little bit about my adventure with decorators. And then we'll look at some examples and talk about some lessons learned. So first of all, what are JavaScript decorators? Uh, how many people here have actually used JavaScript decorators already? Only a few. Uh, has anybody here, besides my coworker, written a JavaScript decorator themselves? All right, a couple. Excellent. So you probably won't learn much, but hopefully the rest of you will enjoy this. Um, so if you're not familiar with decorators, uh, if you used other languages like Python uh, or annotations in Java, uh, they all look pretty similar. It's going to be the add symbol with a function name. And so there's a bunch out there, especially in JavaScript already, uh, a popular library that uses decorators, or that's what gives you uh, decorators to use is called core decorators, which I'll talk more about later. Uh, but they have an auto bind with a bunch of other decorators. Um, Angular 2, I am uh, one of the uh, Angular meetup organizers here. And uh, just a few weeks ago, when they just added a new decorator called ng module. So, uh, and they're prevalent in a lot of the newer frameworks like Aurelia or Ember, uh, things like that. So you'll start to see them a lot more. So what decorators actually do, though, uh, this is from the spec that uh, is currently out there uh, from Yehuda Katz and Brian Turlson. Uh, decorators offer a convenient declarative syntax to modify the shape of class declarations. So what does that really mean? Well, well let's take a look at what a decorator is. So uh, it's an expression that evaluates to a function that takes three arguments, target, name, and descriptor. Uh, this is the same uh, signature as object-defined property, if you're familiar with that. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit as well. And so you'll have a function that looks like this. And so uh, you can either have uh, your dec you can have a function that either returns another function for your decorator, or it can just be uh, that inner function, uh, depending on whether or not you pass arguments to your decorator. And it will optionally return a decorator descriptor to install on the target object. So hopefully we'll be able to dig into that and uh, see what that all means. But the important thing to keep in mind is that they really are just syntactic sugar. So at least in my experience, everything that you can do with decorators, you can already do in JavaScript. They just hopefully give you uh, a better syntax to do it with. And hopefully make, they make your life a little bit better, as they have made mine, I think. So as I said, uh, JavaScript decorators are uh, in draft spec right now, well, stage two. Uh, so they are in flux a little bit. Um, if you're somebody who likes to check out TC39 and what they're doing, you can go out and see uh, what the draft spec is now. Um, this still says stage one. It got moved to stage two, the last TC39 meeting at, on July 28th. So, uh, that's good news if you like decorators. Um, but the real question is, uh, how do I use this uh, today? So it's still in draft spec. It's not part of the official JavaScript spec. Um, so you're going to have to use something like Babel uh, to transpile and to transform that. So, and Babel has had conflicting views about this as well. So in Babel 5, you could decorators were part of Babel 5. You could turn it on. They had a supported transform which was really nice. In Babel 6, they changed the way that they, on what things they supported. So they actually took decorators out. Um, but the good news is, because it got moved to stage two uh, just recently, they're almost back. So if we take a quick look, if you go to the Babel site now, you're going to get this uh, frowny face saying that they're not currently supported. But right after they moved to stage two last month, uh, they started work on an official Babel supported plugin, which is uh, really nice or transform in this case. Um, but if that's the case, and it's not officially supported, what can I do right now? And so that's where this legacy plugin comes into play. Um, it basically 
uh, allows, uh, it's a plugin for Babel that's not an official Babel plugin, but essentially uh, does what the Babel, what they did in Babel 5 to support uh, decorators. And so that's based on the original spec, which is slightly different uh, than the draft spec, but this is where we're gonna focus today because this is how you can use decorators uh, in your code right now. So with that said, how can we use them? Well, the first thing you need to do um, is npm install, and don't do that now. Uh, but uh, the, the important thing to keep in mind here is that if you're gonna use uh, class properties, which a lot of people I probably do use, uh, is you need to put the decorators uh, plug in before that. Otherwise, your decorators won't work with class properties. So a little gotcha that you wanna keep in mind. So let's take a look at an actual example. Here we import uh, a read-only decorator. There's a really simple uh, decorator, and I have a class called test with a uh, class property called grade, which is set to B. When I create a new instance of that, if I try to change uh, the grade to A, it will give me a JavaScript error, and that's because I use a read-only decorator. And so if we look at what that decorator actually does, is it changes the, uh, the writable flag on the descriptor to false. So it essentially uh, makes it so you can't edit that property. So a very simple use case that you can uh, uh, use if you wanna make your arguments, uh, make properties or functions or whatever read only. So let's take a look at these parts of a decorator. There's three parts, or there's three arguments. There's target, name, and descriptor. Uh, the target, this is the thing that you're decorating. So in this case, for, you can decorate classes or methods or properties. For classes, this will be the class constructor. For methods and properties, this will be the class prototype. The name, obviously this is the name of the, th the thing that you're decorating. If you have a class uh, decorator, this is gonna be undefined, but for methods and properties, this will be the method or property name. And the last one is descriptor. So this describes the, the data accessor that you're decorating. And so uh, I only caught a little bit of that last talk, but you probably don't know what it, if you're like me, you didn't know what a descriptor was before, at least I didn't know what it was before I started working with decorators, even though uh, it's really part of kind of an ES5 thing, but we're gonna kind of look at what those mean. Uh, for decorators, when you have a class uh, decorator, it's gonna be undefined. But for methods and properties, it's gonna be the, des the descriptor of that method and property you're decorating. So what does that mean? Let's quick look at what some descriptors are. Um, I, as part of my story, you'll hear in a little bit, uh, unfortunately up until like the beginning of this year, I didn't get to do a lot of, at least at my work, I didn't get to do a lot of nice new stuff using ES6 or 2015 and transpiling and using the latest and greatest stuff. We were kind of stuck supporting uh, some, old, uh, some old browsers and stuff and we didn't uh, take advantage of all those things. And so I never really, there's a lot of ES5 stuff that I personally never learned and one of those things was object-defined property. And there's uh, two different types of descriptors that object-defined property can use. And there's a, that's a data descriptor uh, and an accessor descriptor. And so the data descriptor really simply is just an object that defines you know, a property, uh, a number, an object, a function, or whatever. So the data descriptor for uh, like a string of test would, be, would have a value of test, and then uh, it has three different uh, uh, optional booleans on it that describe whether or not it can be deleted, updated, or enumerated. And similarly, an, access, an accessor descriptor is something that allows you to uh, define a getter and or a setter, as well as define whether or not it's configurable or enumerable. So what does that mean in decorators? So if we look at a really simple, another simple example, when you actually, we just have a decorator on, uh, on our bar method of class foo, if we look at what, that, what those arguments would actually be in the decorator function, it's pretty simple. The target would be the class prototype, the name would be bar because that's the uh, method that we're decorating, and the descriptor would be the bar func would have four arguments or four properties. Bar, which is the function itself, and then whether or not it's writable, enumerable, and configurable. So a lot of stuff, but at least we have maybe some technical understanding of what that is. Uh, I'm, I wanna share with you just a short story of why uh, I got excited about decorators and I think they're uh, a great addition to JavaScript. So 
Uh, where I work at D3, uh, we have two web apps. One's written in Backbone, one's written in Angular. And so they're both fairly large. So we, the back, Backbone is getting a little old, at least as far as web technologies are concerned. And so eventually we want to probably migrate to something else, but it's a large web app. We can't just throw it away. We can't just go to something new. Uh, so this spring we started, uh, you know, uh, introducing Webpack and Babel and transpiling our, our, our co writing ES6 and transpiling back to ES3 and ES5 if necessary. And then, but, you know, we had this older code base using Backbone. We're trying to upgrade it, and that actually ran into some problems. Uh, I don't know how many people here use Backbone, um, so you're going to get a quick insight on why I thought how decorators really helped uh, us migrate to ES6 with Backbone. Um, if we look at some, uh, a simple backbone view, if you're not familiar with the backbone, a view is just a kind of a DOM element that you render. Uh, you can define the tag, the class, um, and events on it. Pretty simple. The ES5 syntax is actually pretty nice. Uh, it's very concise. You can define those properties right on the, uh, right on the, uh, right on the object. However, if you move to uh, ES6 2015, and you start using classes, it actually gets a lot more ugly. Uh, ideally, we would save a lot of code, but this gets actually quite a bit longer. And that's because, unfortunately, Backbone doesn't really work with ES6 classes that well. Um, there are actually a number of different ways you can do it. This is how we initially decided to do it. But uh, the properties that you saw on the previous slide, tag, class, events, uh, we don't have class properties in ES6. You can use the, uh, the Babel transform if you want to get class properties, but it still uh, causes an issue because Backbone wants those uh, properties available at constructor time, and class properties don't actually get instantiated until after the constructor. So uh, even if I use class properties, they won't work for things like tag name and class name because they won't be available. And so this actually made our to a certain degree, we got to use nicer things. We got to use class. We got to use, uh, you know, we didn't have to use the function keyword for our, uh, our class methods. We could start using all the other nice parts of ES6. But uh, I really liked uh, Justin's talk this morning. Uh, he says he gets care mad. And so this, this actually made me get care mad. So um, they don't quite go together. Uh, they weren't. There are, there are actually a couple other ways to solve that problem. We chose to use, if I go back real quick, we chose to use getters. Um, Backbone does do this thing where they use the underscore result function so they can evaluate all your properties as either the value themselves or functions. So it allows you to use getters because these getter functions are available at constructor time. However, you can do other things. You can actually pass them directly into the constructor if you want. I think there's a third one that I can't remember. But this is what we settled on. But we didn't really like the syntax because they re backbone really wasn't meant for, wasn't designed with classes in mind. You can use class properties for some of those prop for some of those properties, but it doesn't always work. And I got upset about the, and it basically made me upset with the syntax. So uh, then I went on vacation, and after a couple days of not coding, I decided there are a couple things I want to look at. Uh, the first one, which some people might get mad, but that I wanted to look at was TypeScript. I spent a couple hours on that, and I gave up. It was, I, I personally didn't find it easy. I've been to those conferences where people are like, hey, just drop TypeScript in, everything works. Uh, that wasn't my experience. I'm hoping TypeScript 2 or I was just doing it wrong is probably the case. But then the other thing I was going to look at was uh, decorators. And this made my life really happy once uh, I started to work, uh, start, started to use decorators in, uh, for this specific uh, backbone problem we were running into. So let's take a look at some code. So if we look back at that uh, original backbone view, I had these getters that I had to use uh, for tag name and class name. But once I started using decorators, I could go to a much simpler syntax. I could, go to, I could annotate or decorate the class with uh, tag name and class name and define, define those on my class. Um, you can use multiple decorators, and I'll touch on that in a second. The other one that was really cool uh, that we'll see is uh, events. So in Backbone, you have to define events as this events object, uh, and then you obviously have those, the methods that they're going to call. 
what I was able to do is to go to something more like this, where uh, we created, I created a decorator called on, where we could mark up the specific method that was gonna be called with the event that we wanted to trigger it. So this made me a lot happier. So let's do a quick, uh, something quick about multiple decorators. Uh, if you're using multiple decorators, which we actually do quite a bit, uh, it is important to remember that order matters. Uh, they're evaluated top to bottom, but executed from bottom to top. So if that doesn't make sense, I have a quick example here. Um, if you have a class bar with a method foo and you have two decorators on it, it would get evaluated uh, similar to this, where foo is passed to g and the result of g is passed to f. So if that, hopefully, with a little, if you're, uh, hopefully that makes sense. So let's take a look at, some, at how uh, these examples actually work under the covers. So first, the really, the really simple one is class name. So I created a decorator called class name that takes the class that I want to add to my backbone view. So behind the scenes, uh, what I did is uh, exported a function class name, which takes the value that's the class name that I want to pass in or, and attach to my view and it returns a function, and the only argument that I use in this case is target, and I, which is the class constructor in this case. And on, that, on the class prototype, I set class name equal to the value passed in. What this does is it allows my class, to be, my class name to be available at constructor time, and so backbone just works nicely again. The other really cool one was the, was the on decorator. And so the way this works is behind the scenes, it takes advantage of the same backbone code, but it allows me to uh, describe my events a lot better. So uh, you pass in the event name, which in Backbone, if we look, is just the event and the selector that you want to listen that you want to listen for that event on. And then we check to see if there if uh, the target, which is the class uh, prototype in this case, uh, has the events the events object ready. If it doesn't, it creates it and it sets the uh, it sets up the events hash just like it would if I was defining it at the top of my, uh, like I did in ES5. So the other um, library I wanted to quick talk about was core decorators. Um, I'll give you a quick example out here. Um, this is a really great library. I encourage you. There's a whole bunch of other libraries, but this is the one I wanted to focus on. Um, there's libraries, uh, there's ones for observables, there's one called MobX that I know we're looking at using. Um, someone was telling me that there's a Lodash decorator library. Um, so there's a bunch out there. Uh, this one uh, I really like. This is uh, maintained by a guy named Jay Phelps. Uh, he, there's a whole bunch of decorators out here that are really useful that I'll touch on a few. But the nice part about this library is it's specifically made to work with the existing decorators plugin. And, uh, his goal is as the new uh, Babel plugin and uh, official spec becomes uh, clear, his goal is to keep this library updated with that. So uh, it's a very nice uh, library to use with some nice features. So uh, some, of the, some of the ones that are really nice that we use, uh, AutoBind, all this does is bind the context of the class to this for the events that you, or for the methods that you uh, decorate. If you decorate the class, it will bind all of the methods to that class con to that context uh, in the, in, that are in the class. Debounce, a really common use case is you need to debounce something because you don't want input or whatever updating something regularly. Uh, you can decorate uh, a class method with the debounce function. It'll create a new debounce function that will only execute uh, as often as uh, you pass in the number of milliseconds. Uh, another one that I think we're going to start using is deprecate. Uh, so if you, we have a large code base, so when we want to make changes, we can't just decide we're going to change, you know, go through 20,000 lines of code or however many lines of code our current code base is. And we have to do it kind of piecemeal. As we go into a module, we update it to whatever the latest way we're doing it is. And so this would allow you to deprecate uh, existing methods. You just pass in a... Uh, a string and it will do a console warn anytime that method is used. The last really cool feature of core decorators is they have this apply decorator helper. And so what this does is it allows you to use decorators even if you don't, you're not using Babel, you just want to use vanilla JS. 
but you still want to take advantage of the cool functionality that uh, core decorators gives you. And so they made a helper that allows you to apply a decorator without having to transpile or use Babel. Uh, some, of the, some of the lessons that I learned while uh, uh, working with decorators is that you always want to remember the existing descriptor. So if you have a decorator function, that descriptor def uh, uh, essentially describes the object that you're decorating. And so on a method or a property, it's going to contain the value, the, that method or, or that function or uh, property value, as well as whether it's enumerable, configurable, or writable. And so if you just, especially if you're using multiple decorators, if you decide that you're going to create your new descriptor or whatever, you want to, uh, you need to either copy those parameters over or uh, just modify the existing descriptor because otherwise you're going to get weird behavior where something is no longer enumerated when you think it should be or something's no longer allowed to be deleted and that'll cause some big problems for you. Uh, this, is an, this is another decorator that we wrote that is used uh, on our backbone models where we can uh, save, off, we can use something to, a decorator to maintain the state. And in this case, it adds, uh, it adds these functions, save, save state, restore state, and have state change to uh, that class, which allows, which kind of exposes those functions. The thing that you need to keep in mind uh, is that you want to uh, make that known, or uh, especially if it's private to the decorator, you may want to use like an underscore or something like that, so you don't run into name collisions. Uh, there was a lot of a lot of hate over the last, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago about mixins. And so this was, he's, this was a similar argument as if you're going to use mix-ins or something like this, you want to still, uh, you want to make sure you avoid naming collisions because somebody else could easily, you know, create their own save function on their class and overwrite the functionality you add with the decorator. And the last lesson is you want to make sure you use the function keyword. So if you're like me, I was like, oh, sweet, I've got ES6, I can use arrow functions everywhere, they're the deal. Um, that causes problems, especially with decorators. If you have a, dec if you have a function that returns uh, that a decorator function, if you use an arrow function on that, inner, uh, on that inner function that you're returning, if this was just an arrow function, it would have the context of this, uh, of this outer function. And you, want, you don't want that. You want this, uh, the context of this inner function to be the same context as the method you're calling. So when you decorate something, it will have the context of the thing you're decorating. And so that's why you want to use the function keyword. So uh, that's all I have for decorators. Uh, if you, everything's available online. Uh, hopefully, uh, you'll be able to take advantage and at least get you close enough uh, that uh, you can start figuring out use cases and ways to make your life better with JavaScript decorators. Uh, if you want to follow me or tell me what you liked or didn't like about the uh, presentation, go ahead and let me know. Thank you.